Today I'm going to do my review on the new DFA hand cannon for Destiny 2 and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome to Guardian Watcher. If it's your first time here and you enjoy learning all things about Destiny, then hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you won't miss out on any future videos. Now, I know that there have been a lot of other YouTube channels that have already reviewed this weapon, but most content creators do things a little differently and it actually took me a while to get my hands on a DFA, especially given that there are so many ways to farm it within the Tree of Probabilities Nightfall this week. In this video, I'm going to tell you guys the truth about the DFA inside and out, so let's get started. Now, the gameplay you are watching is the exact Nightfall that I actually got my DFA from. Let me know down in the comments how you guys got your first DFA or if you're still trying to grind for it. So, we are going to start with the DFA's stats first. According to DestinyTracker.com, the DFA has an RPM of 140, an impact of 84, a range of 50, stability of 59, a magazine of 9, a reload speed of 52, and a handling of 48. As for its hidden stats, assuming that the top stat is its power stat, which is 47, a zoom of 14, an inventory size of 58, and aim assist of 77 with a recoil direction of 88. As for its intrinsic perk, we have adaptive frame, which a well-rounded grip, reliable and sturdy. Then for the barrels, we have arrowhead break, polygon rifling, as well as extended barrel, for the magazine, we have Accurized Rounds, which this weapon can be fired long distances, increases range. And then we have Drop Mag, which magazine drops on reload, wasting ammunition, but greatly increases reload speed. Then for the traits, we have Opening Shot, which improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of the attack. And then we have Rampage, which kills with this weapon temporarily grant increased damage. And this stacks three times. Now, mine is actually a Masterworks with a plus uh, 10 in the magazine, and what this does, it does give you one round extra, so it turns it from a 9 round magazine to a 10 round magazine. Now, let me clarify how opening shot actually works. Normally, like I said, you have 9 rounds in the magazine. The opening shot perk doesn't just activate on the first shot of each magazine. It activates on each opening shot of each encounter. So, for example, when you fire three shots on an enemy, the first shot will activate opening shot. If you stop shooting, reposition, and do that without reloading, and you fire three more shots, then your fourth shot will also activate opening shot, and the same goes for the seventh and tenth shot if you have the magazine masterworks on your DFA. Now, the three shots is just an example. You can fire one shot, and reposition without reloading and then fire another shot and opening shot will still activate. If you listen very closely, there is a specific sound indicator when opening shot activates. Listen for it and you'll be able to maximize the effectiveness of opening shot. Now, having extended barrel, accurized rounds, and opening shot is probably what I would use in PvP, but for PvE, I definitely would switch to drop mag as well as rampage. So with all that said, how does the DFA compare to the most popular hand cannon since Destiny 2's release? Well, both the DFA and Better Devils have the same RPM, impact, power, zoom, and recoil direction. However, the DFA excels over the Better Devils in range, stability, reload speed, handling, inventory size, and aim assist, which I might add are all the best stats for hand cannons. Most of those stats are only better by a few points though, with the exception of stability and inventory size, because the DFA is 11 points higher than the Beto Devils in stability and 8 points higher in inventory size. The only stat that the Beto Devil wins over the DFA is in magazine size, but that's only by one point. And you can kind of cancel that out, you actually use the Masterworks to get the magazine, and then they'll be equal. With all of that on paper stuff out of the way, what do I think about the DFA? At first, I labeled it as the best hand cannon, as did everyone else, just by looking at the stats, but it wasn't until I actually got my hands on one that this assumption had come true. The DFA has a few truths to it. Truth number one, 
The consistency of the DFA is ridiculous. It is amazing. And I highly recommend this hand cannon to anybody. And truth number two. If you are unlucky, then you will have to grind the shit out of the game in order to get it. This hand cannon destroys opponents in both PvE and PvP. I enjoyed using the DFA in both PvE as well as PvP a lot, but given that it is a hand cannon and hand cannons don't get a lot of ammo, you have to constantly reload. Because of this, I primarily use the DFA in PvP. Now the DFA is a 3 shot kill on opponents with full health and shield in PvP given that you go for your headshots. Or 2 headshots and 1 body shot. Now that's not saying that it can't be used in PvE because it definitely is a good weapon in PvE but that ammo count in reserve isn't really to my liking. This would be a different story if the DFA's magazine masterwork gave it 2-3 to three rounds instead of just 1. It doesn't seem like much but 2-3 to three extra rounds making the magazine 11-12 to 12, makes a huge difference for a hand cannon. In PvE this weapon like most hand cannons one shot small enemies like Thrall and Dregs and is very powerful on other enemies usually killing anything that is not a yellow bar enemy in 3-4 to four shots. This is a combination of at least 2 headshots and 1-2 to two body shots. Once again, I cannot stress that the consistency of the DFA is unreal. Like, it is like, wow. I love this hand cannon and I will be replacing my Better Devils hands down with the DFA. That is not saying that the Better Devils is a bad hand cannon either. If you cannot get the DFA, then I definitely recommend using the Better Devils as a substitute until you can actually get one. So how do you actually get a DFA? Well. As I said before, you are going to have to grind for it, like crazy. Specifically, the weekly Nightfall Strike, the Tree of Probabilities. Now, there are many ways to go about doing it, but one thing to note is that do not listen to other people when they say that they know the best way to grind for it. Do not fall into clickbait videos that other YouTubers post because what worked for one person will not always work for others. It took me 43 nightfalls to get this weapon. Yes, 43. I ended up doing 28 nightfalls with high handicaps to get over 65,000 points, 5 with low handicaps, and 5 with no handicaps as well as doing 5 nightfalls on normal. In all of that time, many of the groups that I was a part of ended up getting the DFA with the exception of me, and then within 2 more rounds, got it a second time. Now Bungie had said that a higher handicap gives a better drop rate but I highly doubt that. I've been in groups where my fire team members got the DFA and I didn't. And that happened in matches with no handicaps, high handicaps, low handicaps and on normal. So there is really no surefire way in order to get the DFA. So don't listen to people when they said they have the 100% way in order to get it. It is completely RNG and the RNG gods hate me so. When I finally got the DFA, and I'm not saying that this is the best way, we did it on the Prestige Nightfall with a Void Singe and everybody had a handicap multiplier of 13 times. We went in with two Night Stalker Hunters and one Sentinel Titan. The weapons that I used were the Nameless Midnight, the Positive Outlook which had Void on it, and the Telesto. It was a ridiculous grind but you know what, in the end it was totally worth it. It just sucks that other people ended up getting the DFA on their first run or within like their first 10 runs and I didn't get mine until 43. Anyways, if you haven't already done so, let me know in the comments how you got your DFA. Which version of the Nightfall you actually did, whether on Normal or Prestige, if you had modifiers or didn't, and what loadout you actually used. And if you enjoyed this video, then feel free to watch these other videos as well. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.